Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to style HTMX apps with CSS. So HTMX is changing the way we build web apps. This makes sense. HTMX allows traditional multi-page apps to achieve single page app-like experiences with little added complexity. But it's a relatively new paradigm. So there's often no paved road for doing common things. Recently, I've seen a lot of questions about how to style HTMX apps with the CSS. So in this post, I'm gonna share how I do this in production. First, we're gonna start off with the philosophy and values of HTMX. HTMX, which I think will inform how we build one HTMX apps, but then further how we're going to actually want to build styles into our apps. And so the power of HTMX is that we can build these spa-like experiences with the simplicity of MPAs the simplicity of multi-page applications. And I think many are tempted to leverage and extend HTMX's partial page renders to do all sorts of dynamic loading of assets, things like JS, CSS, et cetera, because this is kind of how the spas work, right? They try to make this bundling very kind of simple and abstracted away from you. But of course, that's how we get into the, all the complexities, <laughs> because if you abstract too much, you don't understand what's going on and you get yourself into all sorts of kind of, um, weird scenarios, we'll say. Now, I personally believe that this is the wrong approach. It adds a lot of this complexity for very little gain. So we're not really getting anything for this. And we're kind of adding back that complexity that we are trying to get away from, right? The, the one, one of the main benefits is that we don't have added complexity. To, so to go back and like add complexity back seems weird. And so instead, I think we should start HTMX apps by building them like a standard multi-page application. This gives us a core structure that does what we want if a bit stiffly. Then after we have that core structure, we can sprinkle in HTMX to build interactive islands for those parts of the page that would benefit from some added dynamism. And usually there's only going to be a few areas on a given page that would actually benefit from this dynamism. So this gives us the power we want with minimal added complexity. And I think this like process of like approaching problems really helps in a lot of areas, like building this kind of core skeleton structure, making sure that sound before we go further is one, I think very organic, but two, it really prevents like too much premature optimization um, where you kind of like get ahead of your skis and like you've built all this stuff that you're not never gonna leave. And so when I think of like building this like this, it's like I'm building a multi-page application. This is my outline for what this thing's gonna work. And then I can do this very fast, very easily, no complexity, make sure it is actually kind of doing the thing I want. And then after that, and I have an idea that this is the part of the app that actually works. And this is kind of the vision that I'm gonna like solidify. Then you can add this dynamism because you'll know what the pages look like. You'll kind of know what the interactions are. And you're like, oh, this would be nice to have. I'm um, doing it the other way. You're gonna add dynamism to like all these parts of the page that like doesn't actually need it. And so you've just added so much complexity for actually zero gain, and thus you've gotten a net loss um, in terms of like, you know, ROI. So that's my thought on that. All right, so CSS and HTMX. So how do we apply this approach to CSS in our HTMX app? So multi-page applications and really most websites on the web, like this is just how the web works, tend to have one large CSS file that they use for the entire site. And you might have like a few divisions here, um, but they're usually pretty coarse grain. Like they're not very granular. There might be like three or maybe five if you've got like a lot of different sections, but not not like hundreds, like, you know, the spas like to do to kind of unbundle things and try to make things fast. They really just simply plot this thing in the header and every page gets access to all the available styles. So there's never any like wonder of whether you have the styles or not. It's just everything's there. So of course you have it. Now this might seem a bit blunt and inefficient. You're like, you know, what if there's a bunch of unused styles? This like might lead to wasted memory, which means like slower download speeds and thus slower like page load speeds. You're like, well, what if the payload is super large? I got a super complex app with all these styles. It's gonna be really, really big. And so you might get slower load speeds. And I think, you know, these are valid concerns, but like largely this doesn't really matter till you're at enterprise scale. And at that point you can like worry about it and hire people to, to worry about it. Um, and stuff like that. But I would even say that like for most apps outside of like Fangland, like planet scale land that aren't doing like egregiously large style sheets, like you're not just like dumping the full source code of like, you know, Tailwind plus Bulma plus whatever else into your app and just using them even though you're not using all those styles. Um, this actually works fine. <laughs> like like it's is almost never the actual bottleneck on your web app. Um, and if it is, you need to probably revisit uh, your styles because you're probably doing something wrong. But the simplicity of this thing actually has a quite a lot of power and which is why it kind of just works 
you know, out of the box for, for most cases. The first is that it's just easy to set up, right? Like you don't need to spend time bike shedding over these things. Like you just, all the styles are here. Thus, if it's on the page, the styles work. Like that's it. The next one is that it can be cached, right? Like the web browsers, the web super good at caching. Okay. So if we have that same file on all pages, guess what? It can be cached on all pages, right? You Yes, you might have the one big load because you did your CSS wrong. Um, but then it's there, it's cached. Eh, we don't have to worry about this stuff anymore. The other thing is that now that we have HTMX, we actually can leverage it a little bit, but in a way that gives us a lot of power for very little complexity. And that's to use things like HX Boost, which basically allows us to load the content of a page without re-rendering um, the assets, okay? And so let's say you have this big CSS thing and it's cached. I don't know, maybe it's too big to be cached. Like it, that shouldn't be the problem. But yeah, there's some time involved with caching, um, at least in like re-rendering the styles. That's the white flash, right? Well, with HX Boost, we get around this. So it's literally just a simple tag you have. And it's like, I'm just not gonna re-render the head. And so it goes and gets your content and then it just changes the content, but it doesn't re-render the styles. And so again, this is a great way that you can avoid even the tiny bit of re-rendering you might have due to um, your large CSS file. But if you don't do this, if you try to do some dynamic bundling, if you try to do any of these more complicated things, you lose out on all of these things, right? It's not easy to set up. It's gonna be harder to cache because now you've got like different versions of this thing floating around. And you're not gonna be able to do HX boost because it's possible that every single time you reload um, an interactive island, you're gonna need to fetch different CSS. And so now you've made your thing way more complex and you've lost the power. A lot of the power we get from this simplified approach. And so all that to say that like all we need to do to add CSS styles in our HTMX app is to link the style sheet in the website's head tag, just like we would with a standard multi-page application, just like we would with basically any website on the web. And so, you know, this is usually how it looks. You're in your, your head tag, you just have a link, it's a style sheet, and then you just say where the, where the styles are. Very, very simple. Okay, so let's talk about CSS and HTMX in production. So, you know, this approach and kind of my arguments for this approach might seem overly simplified and like it won't work in production or be flexible enough for real to real world apps. But that's really not true. Like this is how we built and use styles in web apps for decades and it works just as well today. And possibly it works even better now because we do have these HTMX dynamic re-render capabilities. So now we can go further than just that caching that we saw earlier, which you know works fine, but we can do even better. And now one common gripe I've seen from people new to HTMX is that they can't use all the nice UI technologies and styles that they're used to. And so I think this is where a lot of the ideas of like, oh, it's not um, convenient enough or no, it can't do any of this stuff that's like more complicated come from because like, you know, their favorite React library hasn't been ported back to like vanilla uh, CSS, JS, et cetera yet. And that's true. Like there, there aren't that many libraries that are like for kind of what I would call like vanilla web pages right now, simply because for the last decade, the majority mind share has been inside of spa land. And so for the last decade, most libraries and stuff have been built for spas. But the thing is, if it processes down into HTML, CSS and or JS, which is essentially everything because that is what browsers understand. And so, you know, all these spas, they're just doing CSS, HTML, JS, that's just what they end up being, then it can be used by a web page and thus by HTMX. It just might require some unwinding of all of that domain specific logic to get it back to its core fundamentals. And so all this to say that you will be able to use all those things, but it might just take some time for it to come back to um, the fundamental land. Now, as an example, you know, I use this styling approach to bundle Tailwind and Daisy UI in my recent project travel map. And so basically what I do is at build time, I'm just compiling Tailwind and Daisy UI CSS styles into a single CSS file and placing it in my static folder that my site serves, which should be very similar to any kind of style builds pipeline that you have in your own kind of spa. Like same thing you can do um, with MPA server-side rendered stuff, which is usually how most, most like HTMX apps are built. And then at runtime, you know, my, my page just includes the style on the header and applies it to all pages. And thus I get all the styles for all the pages, including those using HTMX. And it's like the same thing, you know, same thing that applies to the spas. We can do it in the MPAs and usually quite a bit simpler. And for more details about my approach um, to at least the, the building and including in page stuff, um, you can find here in building ASP.NET apps with Tail and CSS. I build most of my stuff on F Sharp, which runs .NET, which runs ASP.NET um, for its web server. And so just to kind of prove this, like here's a snapshot of my, my head tag here, and I can just show you it live as well. Here's travel map. Uh, it's mostly Alpine um, with HTMX for a few of the server side interactivities. Hopefully you can see this, it's kind of hard to make big. Um, but basically, you know, here's my header tag. 
We've got HTMX here. I've got my tailwind here. I've got my um, custom app CSS here. And this is how I'm getting my styles into my HTMX app. It's literally just how you would build a normal web page. And this is really great. You know, it gives me all the power of HTMX and CSS with basically none of the complexities of the spa and dynamic bundling and trying to make sure that, you know, I cash broke all the little tiny bundles everywhere um, and having to, you know, reload like 30 or whatever, however many bundles there happens to be all at the same time. Like we don't have to deal with any of that. It's just simple, it's fast, simple scalable system. That, you know, that's it, that's it. So I really like HTMX for building modern web apps fast and cheap. I do most of this stuff in my spare time as a hobby. So the simpler it is to build, the better it is for my projects and my own sanity. That said, it is a very different paradigm from the client side spas that have, have had majority web dev mindshare for the past decade. So we're venturing back into old but uncommon territory, or at least unfamiliar territory once again. So there's probably going to be a lot of things we'll need to rethink and relearn. Hopefully little guides like this help clarify edge cases and help you get unstuck and back to building. So my question for you is like, what other questions or problems have you faced building apps within HTMX? This gives me ideas of other things to explore and research and come up with solutions or kind of ideas for how to solve. Now, if you like this post, you might also like what it's like to run HTMX in production, stories from experienced software engineers. Might also be interested in why you should choose HTMX for your next web-based side project and ditch the crufty multi-page application and complex single page application. And finally, you might be interested in simple interactive islands with F Sharp in HTMX, which is basically how I think of and builds my apps with HTMX these days. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.